tray. Also took a cup. And it was bigger than this one, a shared among his close friends. And he said, take drink. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so you see, when you tie together the fruit of the vine with the bread of life, this completes the picture of the communion table, the Lord's Supper. And the thing that makes it work so beautifully in the body of Christ is that we do it together. So like you said, this is the bread, this is the bread of life. Take, eat. Let's partake together. existence for the glory of God and you cannot do so with the cloud of guilt hanging above your head we are going to pray that tonight in Jesus name it shall be removed we believe that in Jesus name at the cross of Calvary that there's healing that there's redemption that there's restoration that there's regeneration that there's transformation and I pray that tonight as we unite in arms of love around you that as the church stretches out a hand of authority we are freeing them together in Jesus' name. For the Bible says that what is freed on earth shall be freed in heaven. Amen. Do you believe it, church, tonight? Amen. That we're going to do it right now. I want you to get ready. Not to watch, not to listen, not to be entertained. But to pray that in Jesus' name, this young man will sleep tonight. Amen. That he'll rest tonight. Amen. That that rest will be felt in his family. Amen. And that will be a stand-up reminder of the grace and the love of Jesus Christ in Kitchener Water. Hallelujah. We're going to pray together right here, right now. Pastor Rel, can we just go down and pray? And you pray. You pray and sing. Worship band, if you could just lead us in worship at the same time. Thank you. Let's pray.
part of the revival process that uh, the Lord wants for the church and for my home and for yours is to bring back a spirit of prayer. And sometimes, you know, He allows the craziest things to happen so that God's people wake up and pray. It's the truth. It's the Holy Ghost truth. Matt and Sarah are on one accord, and we have a couple that we're going to pray for their baby as well. Pastor Ralph is going to pray for, uh, sorry, what are the needs, Pastor? I'm just going to wait a minute here. In times of despair, it's easy to pray. But when things are going good, it's easy to forget to pray. You no longer see a need to pray because you're on the peak of the mountain and you have everything under your control. And then something happens in a split second which reminds you that we actually have nothing under our control. That we are under God's control. Amen. That we are under His protective wing. Amen. And that for a second, He, he just lifts it. Amen. We can only imagine the calamity. But God has ordained a night like this for us, His church, to sanctify the redeemed. He's arranged for a night like this. I cannot have scripted something like this in my wildest dreams for Matt and Sarah and their family. And he's arranged for a night like this for this baby that we're going to be praying over in just a moment's time. Do you see what's happening here, church? God wants to wake the church up. That's you and me. To understand the times that we live in. One of the real favorite scriptures that a lot of the, a lot of the young people in our church have up on Facebook and other places on the internet is the one from a Chron uh, what's it, Chronicles, seven fourteen. If my people pray, the people who are called by my name—that's you and me, the royal seed—would repent and turn from their wicked ways. I will come. I will speak to them. I will heal them. I will redeem them. And along with them, the whole land of Canada. That's the message. But that repentance and healing starts first in the house of God. Amen. It's you and me. Can I call on the family, please, to bring the baby to the front? Thank you. 